Welcome back to the Out About Podcast. I am Patrick. And you all know my friend, Chili. co-host, Chili Peppers. Pepper, just one. Just pe- What? Just one pepper. Chili pepper. Ch- what? Chili pepper. Chili pepper. Singular, not plural. Singular. Yes. Pepper. You know, it's funny. That's important to how I got the nickname Chili, but we'll tell that story Yeah, but black pepper is multiple. Anyway, does that matter? And you all know our producer, Jerry. What's up, everyone? That's not it. I'm sorry. I screwed that up. You know our producer, Jerry. What's up, everybody? Oh, uh, what a week it has been. Have you recovered from the Mid-America Truck Show? I'm working on it. You know, it's it's it was a week and there was, a, you know, a little after the truck show functions and uh, I'm working on it. Back to work yesterday. Yes. Got some uh, good work in, back to work today. Got some mediocre work in, back to work tomorrow. I don't know if any work will get done tomorrow, but hey, we'll try. Well, I did hear you had uh, business meetings in Kentucky after, right? We did have meetings in Kentucky meetings after. Kentucky, yeah. 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 It was uh lots of Kentucky hugs in those meetings. Lots of well, they're very friendly people. They truly are very friendly. They they I think um are the epitome of southern hospitality. Uh mm. yeah. Mm. Eh. I guess some disagreement from the true southerners in the room. I mean they're, they're kind of yanks, but it's fine. Kind of, yeah, but I was just going along with the whole, you know, thing, and you guys poo-pooed that, so. I mean, I enjoyed the Southern hospitality. Is that better? That's better way great. To say yes, it? that's, uh, yes, <clears throat> I agree. Or, or was, how about how about this? I enjoyed the hospitality. Yes, I agree with that. I thought it was really fun. Um, I uh, joined you. Joined, that's not the right word. <laughs> like, we're at the hip. I right. joined you for some of those Southern uh, uh, meetings. Right. Yeah, and uh, the business meetings, and we got to talk about a lot of things. And um, you know what impressed me the most about that that part of our trip after Mid America Truck Show was the aroma of life surrounding those establishments. The aroma of life is something to be experienced. It's it's. I think it's similar to others, but. Unlike most aromas. I, I feel you. The closest thing I can think of would be like a bakery. Right. That's why if, I said it's similar to some. If a uh, cow farm had a bakery. Right. Yes. That would be. Yes. Uh, that, that would, would be, be. Cow farm. We call those ranches, right? We do call those ranches. <laughs> cow farm. Yeah. Cow farm, ranches. People get the idea, though, because you can have a ranch of any sort, so it's still have to be a cattle ranch. A hidden valley. Yes. Ranch. Yes, ranch. Yeah. I'm more of a craft person, but anyways. <laughs> um, well, we did just go to the Mid America Truck Show, as we alluded to, and had a lot of fun. Uh, it was great seeing everybody that came out and saw us. You know one thing that surprised me a lot about the Mid America Truck Show? Was yeah. we had multiple people come up to us and say, hey, I know you from your podcast. And I was like... Really? Yeah. That was very surprising. It was very surprising. And I mean, like, I assumed, as you probably do, most of the people that listen to us are people who work or drive for with Highfield. Correct. And um, we're promoting it internally, so a lot of them listen to it to hear kind of what's going on or what sure. have you. Kill some time going down the road. Um, make fun of us, whatever. <laughs> and being at that show and talking to quite a few people who have uh, no affiliation with us whatsoever... Or, or maybe interested in driving for with us, or maybe um, are just another trucker, no intention of getting the, into our line of business, but they still listen to us. It, just, it was really surprising. It I was, just, I was not prepared for that. It, it was a pleasant surprise that they walked up and, and recognized the Outer Belt podcast and not Luke Shire. I mean, some listen to and watch Luke Shire videos as well. Absolutely. But, they called out the Outer Belt podcast, which was really cool. I thought so. so it's, we're, we're babies at it still. I know. You know? I know. And it was so weird, too, because it was like, if it was one person, I'd be like, oh, that was a fluke. Right. But it was a, quite a few people. It was quite a few. And that's it where really it's was. like, oh, this is strange. Yeah. I'm not used to this. I don't like it. I understand now why Jerry um, would rather spend time in the truck than he would uh, like out at Expo visiting people because they just constantly. It's a constant swarm. Swarm of them. You know what I thought was really interesting, though? Was when people would stop by and talk to us, Jerry would ask for their phone, go to the Outer Belt Podcast webpage, and subscribe them. And no one caught on to it. No, no. Yeah. Well, 
you know, a few times I noticed he was going to YouTube and subscribing to us from the, there, not the webpage. Right. But I was fine with whatever. Yeah, whatever. Get the subscriptions up. Good job, Jerry. Absolutely. Thank Sometimes you. you just got to, you know, take control. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. A, did you ring the bell for the alerts? Mm, absolutely. Of course. Why wouldn't you? Of course. I don't know. Do we have an Outer Belt website? No, I actually meant the pod, the, the YouTube page is what I was referring to. But. We do have a um, podcast website. Um, we do. I don't have the web address off the top of my head. Not Sandy. I can put it in the show notes, uh, Facebook, um, but it is provided by our podcast provider. Provider, our, our host. Yes. Um, so they do have a page there that lists all of the episodes. Okay. Cool. Um, so oh, that's very cool. It is cool. It's pretty basic, but yeah. there is something out there. There's something out there. That's good. We have an email address also if you want to get a hold of us. We do have an email address, and people are finally starting to use it. I'm very excited. And that email address is? The Outer Belt Podcast at gmail.com. Is that the as in the Outer Belt Podcast at gmail.com? It is the as in the Outer Belt Podcast at gmail.com. Are you sure it's not the Outer Belt Podcast at I, gmail.com? I, I think that Jerry is um, wise enough to get both the and the Outer Belt Podcast at gmail.com. Can you do that? Is that possible? Does Google recognize um, the, what, the like the long line or the, the, the arch line over the E? I think it does. Okay. Um, when it comes to like SEO and things of that, I have recently learned that. Oh, cool. In the class that I'm taking. See? Um, told you. But when it comes to like a web address or something, I don't think it does. Mm. I told you Jerry's wise enough to do that. Well, he's a learned man. He is. As they would say. Yeah. Where he comes from. Well, uh, I just want to take a second real quick before we get started. Well, I guess we're already started, but... We are. Before we get into it some more and thank all the Highfield family who came out and joined us. A um, lot of staff... A lot of support. Uh, it was it was a great show. We talked to a ton of people, um, hanging out with the Panther booth. And we had uh, Delina came out there. She brought her husband along. He was out there helping recruit people, and it's not even his job or no. company. Um, <clears throat> of course, Kelly and Jimmy Mack were in the house um, where they could be. It was funny because uh, half the time I noticed that Jimmy had to go step away for you know, trucking issues. And same with Don. Don had to go do quite a bit. Uh, but Jerry and Don were there. You and uh, Buttermilk we came were. out. Yeah. Uh, Eric was there, obviously. And so was Kayla and uh, the other Eric, her Eric. Um, and again, Kayla works with us. Eric does not. He used to, but he doesn't anymore. But he was out there um, talking about the brand, talking about what we do. And it ended up being a great show. Did I miss anybody? Who am I forgetting? Matt and Jamie Brookhouse came out they did. and hung out with us, um, and it was a really great. Uh, it was a great show. It was a great show, and it was also great just spending time with uh, all of y'all. Like, so for people who don't know, our company we have people all across America working uh, with us or working for us, and so we don't necessarily get a chance, even as a staff, to hang out very often. And so it was great to be in one place where. All of us are there because pretty much I would say for the most part, everybody in the staff is pretty friendly with each other, right? Like we don't have a whole lot of, of work-related drama. Everybody gets along, and it is a fun experience when we get to hang out. Everybody steps up and pulls their weight and some more when we find places where we can overlap and work together. Yes. Delina has reached out to Melissa and I to talk to recruits You yes. know, when, when they have questions that are sp pretty specific that she can't answer. Um, you know, like, like we said, when Kelly and Jimmy were here, we work, ops works with Kelly daily to make sure we have the right trucks available, maintenance. And, and when, if I'm busy and I, I one of the shops needs to be alerted that the truck is coming, Don and, and Jimmy step right in and, and send an email for me. You know, if we have questions about different things, they're happy to help. So we, we all recognize that for the size company we are and the small amount of staff that we have, that it's on all of us to help out, to, to go and do our job, but also fill in where we need to fill in. I completely agree with you, but I, I think even a step further is we also enjoy each other's company. We do. We truly do. Like, we truly so do. we're going to talk in a second about kind of the things that Matt's that we like the most, but, um, you know, probably one of my favorite 
things we did at Matt was sitting at dinner together and just enjoying conversation and sure. laughter and just all kinds of ridiculousness around um, a dinner table breaking bread. I mean, it is, um, it was such a great, uh, fun time. It was a little challenging finding restaurants. Uh, I that did, would take a big a, a crowd our size on short notice, yes. Yes. I, I, okay, so next year I'm going to have to uh, step it up and pre-plan a little better. A little better. But uh, the places we went to were pretty good. We had a lot of fun. The food was good. The, yeah. the service was good. Nowhere that we went was uh, disappointing at all. Correct. Yeah. It was now we all did, good. And, and we did, there was one restaurant we went to, we overwhelmed them, but um, we were all cool about it and worked with the servers yeah. and everything and it was fine. But it was, um, and it was just a, a pub. It wasn't even like a full, I mean, it was a restaurant, but they were mostly a pub. And so they were kind of like, whoa, that's a lot of people. Right. But, but they, they did step up and take care of business. And like I, you said, yep, we were all cool with it and recognized that they were a little overwhelmed with us and we can be overwhelming. Uh, us? And, no. No, you're right. Um, no. But but we were all perfectly happy with their service and yeah. what they did. Even with the guy spilling water all over me, I'd, whatever, it's just water, bro. I know. Well, you deserved it. I did. I was kind of hot. <laughs> at least that's what Melissa told me. Uh, I think she said, well, at least you're not hot anymore. Oh. I think that's how she phrased it. Well, no, it, but... right, right before the water, uh-huh. she said, you're kind of hot. Oh. And I think the waiter heard that. And he wanted to help cool me off. I get that. Because, you know. I was at uh, Lambert's Cafe years and years ago. Lambert's Cafe is a restaurant in, uh, they have one in Missouri. They have one in Foley, Alabama. They have one one place else that I can't recall. There's only like three or four of them. And it's kind of like Cracker Rail type food. Okay. But when you walk in, they seat you at these big tables and... They hire these local baseball, um, high school baseball kids to come in, and actually they throw the rolls at you. Heard about that place. So they will bring a cart out full of hot, piping hot, big, you know, the big, massive uh, rolls, um, and he'll they'll just stand in one area, and they will lob them all over the place. Nice. I've seen people get smacked <clears throat> in the head and go down like they just got hit by a baseball bat. I've seen <laughs> all kinds of fun stuff, and... Um, I was sitting there enjoying myself. Oh, one of the things they do is they serve you drinks in the end you know, of the insulated cups that are like 80 ounces. Yes. They're huge. Big styrofoam ones? No, not the styrofoam ones. I mean, the plastic ones that have the, oh, uh, the space yeah. all around them. I do, yeah. So it might have been not 80 ounces, probably 32 ounces. But, but big. But big, yeah. 32 ounces for a restaurant it's huge. Sure. And um, I saw him. He was throwing it to me. I was ready to catch it. And I was here up high. And he was down low. And he hit that cup perfectly. And a freshly refilled giant 32-ounce cup of Mountain Dew Ooh. went all over me. And if you know anything about like soft drinks or whatever, when you spill yourself with Mountain Dew, not only do you get the wet, but then you get the dry, sticky. Sticky, yeah. That sticky, icky, icky. And there's nothing I could do. It's just no. like, all right, I just got to suck it up it. and live with it until I can get out of here. And it was for my birthday, of course. My birthday lunch, our dinner. Uh, now the steak was good. Uh, actually, I didn't get steak. I got fat back. They had grilled fat, fat back. Uh, t- uh, anyways. Yeah, let's not go there. Um, so, anyways, tell me if you would, Jerry. What was your favorite part of uh, the Mini America Truck Show? Everything. I think the most important thing was the trucks. There were some really, really cool low riders there. Um, you'll have to help me describe the one, but the apoc. Apocalyptic. Oh yeah, uh, yeah but, the apocalyptic one. Thank yes. you. That one looked really, really cool. I think uh, it was ridiculous. It was my favorite. It had a welder torch, right, on the air cleaner, and that it was, had the hoses all plumbed and everything. Yeah, it was cool. I love the uh, hood ornament, the it, the brass knuckles. Yes. And it, I did. I didn't think about it until I saw a kid walk over to it and grab the brass knuckles like he was going to open the hood with it. I didn't even realize it was actually oriented in that way. Oh, yeah. so it's practical. Open, it's practical. Oh, that's yeah. hysterical. I didn't realize it either. Yeah, it was that. really cool. So it was a tow truck. For those of us, those are, of you that are listening and not watching, it was a tow truck, a flatbed tow truck. It wasn't a modern tow truck. It was like, I don't know. Old. Old, yeah. Um, it had a, a, a sleeper on it. Um, a coffin sleeper. A, co- a coffin sleeper. And the bed was tilted down, like it was loading a truck. It was, it was actually loading a pickup truck from the rear. The paint job is just really hard to describe. 
Yeah. It was a, a base two tone paint paint job, but it had all kinds of c- blended colors of the same. It, um, it was beautiful color scale. It was it was gorgeous. Maybe Jerry will drop a picture of it in our in our show notes for us. And those of you listening, when you get a chance, can go over to the YouTube video and take a look at it. Absolutely. So just so everybody knows, after uh, we get done talking here in a few minutes, we're going to tack on uh, a walkthrough Vince and I made of getting through the show. And it'll be an opportunity for y'all to kind of see the show if you didn't go, see the highlights of that what we what we looked at. We missed a bunch of stuff, we so I, I felt bad about that. Like I, I realized after we did it, we completely missed TA Travel Centers. Completely. The, they, know, brought, but, they brought that big old sign out and everything. We completely walked by it and missed it. That video would have been three hours long. Had we, it would have been. If we, if we had walked through there at normal pace and then sped it up, it still would have been three hours long. Yeah. So we got what we could. We got some really cool stuff. Yeah, we did. So if you were listening on the podcast for this portion of for that portion of it, you may want to pull up YouTube and, and or, or pull the website up, or the Facebook or Instagram. I know, Jerry, you said you're going to grab a bunch of screen grabs of things we're talking about, throw it on yes. there so you'll be able to actually see what we're talking about. Or if you want to sit through the YouTube video, that's going to probably be better than listening to it on podcast. Yeah, but we're still going to talk and describe a little bit about what we're seeing as you go through there. So if you don't get a chance to see it, uh, you will at least be able to hear a little about it. Yeah, um, it's not just a video of us walking around the show. There actually is commentary attached to it as well. Yes. Talking about what we're looking at, you know, who the vendor is possibly. Yep. So it wasn't just us walking around in fast motion. There it, is some commentary. It actually came out a whole lot better than I thought it was going to. Same, I, I, I was very impressed. We have a great editor. We do. Um, and the uh, – but that truck – with the tow truck is on there and it is highlighted. So you will be able to see that. Some of the low rider trucks like you were talking about, there was one on the same row we were on, but like down the opposite end, that thing had, to, was it a quarter inch off the ground? I don't think it was. I think it was about an eighth of an inch off the ground. On it the was obscene. It now was. I do know it was because the airbags were lower. Oh, sure. But still, even with them up, it couldn't have been more than two inches. Like it, unbelievable. No, it, it was unbelievable how low it was. Yeah. It was and the colors. Oh, it was a beautiful truck. Gorgeous truck. Yeah. And I love it. Like when they do all these trucks, they're doing these old Kenworths, these old Peterbilts, and they're just making them look, you know, pristine. Yeah. Gorgeous truck. There is something about a cool old truck. I mean, we see a couple in that video, a little teaser. We're going to see a couple really, really, really old trucks. Um, so. And they you, weren't all show trucks in, in the sense that they were fancied up and fresh paint jobs. And some were working trucks, like today. Yeah. You know, still working trucks, and they weren't all beautified. Uh, but they're still gorgeous trucks. The technology is just Absolutely. gorgeous. Amazing. There's a whole, there's a whole row of trucks in that in the, in the walkthrough that we filmed. That's going to be nothing but working trucks. Yeah. Um. So every truck you see in that section, we 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 pointed out, you'll see is actually a working truck, like leaving the show, going to hook up to a trailer, right. and then go haul and cargo. Yeah. Um. But there was a whole section of the show outside that we missed. It wasn't even in the front area. No. We saw that it was in the back, in the back area. area. That was a work, it's the working trucks truck show or something like that. Every single truck in there has to be a working truck. And and I don't mean like working as in it runs. I mean no, working it, as in it. It hauls freight. It, it hauls freight. It makes money. It's portion yeah. plates. It's all that stuff. And those are so cool. Those guys are so proud of their truck. And I like that too because I do like a show queen truck. Those are cool. Sure. Everybody, I mean like there's a lot of people who are like, oh, it's a trailer queen or whatever. Who cares? It's yeah, a beautiful, beautiful truck, truck. And so it's a great example of our Americana that is salvaged. But there is something also to be said about the truck that has two, three million miles on it and is in pristine, or, or really good condition. Right. Pristine, it's been but well good taken condition. Care of. And it's still out there making money. That's just a really cool uh, thing to see. So um, it was a really good show. I think my favorite part of the show, I was going to say the Lowrider, honestly. You kind of mm-hmm. stuck it away from me. That was uh, such an impressive uh, vehicle. It really. It really surprised me how nice it was. I enjoyed the cab overs too. I'm a cab over nut. Yeah. Um, cool I wish we still made cab over or used them, but uh, nobody makes them in America anymore. We still get them in Europe, but not here. And uh, they had some cab overs that were really, really cool. Um, and and those might have been some of my favorite trucks. It's one of the things we always joked about doing is buying an old cab over, stretching it, putting a box on it, and having <laughs> it be like an expediter truck, just really old. Right. And I think that'd be really cool, but, you know. It'd be, it'd be the high-filled uh, trailer queen? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That'd be cool. But it'd be cool, though, to see that. It would be. Well, and we do shows, and we have to bring things sometimes. It'd sure. be not, we could, it could be a working truck. It doesn't have to be a 
per se a, a, a trailer queen, but right. yeah, still have it nice. Um, but yeah, I think between the low rider and the and the cab overs, that's where I'm going to go. Okay. How about you, Vince? What was your uh, creme de la crop? You know, it's funny that I'm the oldest one here, and I like all the newest trucks. I'm a technology junkie, as you both know. I, I love technology. Yes. So for me, it was getting into those ARI sleepers. Oh, oh, I completely forgot about that. Those ARI sleepers are so beautiful. The technology inside of them is amazing. I, 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 I just, I love them. I mean, the thought that goes to, to the what I, from what I saw, and then also talking with ARI, ARI rep that was there, yeah. the thought that goes into building those trucks and 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 um, designing the sleepers. I, I thought was amazing. Um, they had some some great apportionments in those sleepers. I really do did enjoy them. Yeah, they kind of impressed me a lot too because they're starting to get into, into things like multiplex wiring and, and such. Right. Which, if you don't know what that is, that's so instead of like just a regular on off switch for the lights, which is great, and we've been doing it for sure. years, just a regular on off sure. switch. They don't fail. They're perfect. Multiplex lighting is where they'll have like a bank of uh, dimmers and everything wires to that dimmer. All the lights in the truck, and then. Um, you can actually go to a panel, and they can be a look like an LCD screen or right. whatever, and you can actually select your lights and how bright you want them, how soft you want them. Uh, what sometimes color change you want. Yeah, yeah, change colors, things like that, and it'll do it for all the lights. Now, a lot of the trucks have rope lighting, and a lot of the trucks have some limited capability, sure. but this is for the whole truck, everything. And I've seen fancy RVs do that. But I haven't seen it make its way to trucks. And so when I saw it on a couple, I think there was a, two trucks that had it, I was like, whoa, okay, so they finally called on to that. That's an extremely expensive upgrade, and it's cool to see that now they're able to do them in trucks. It is. I think it, that the, the, te- the technology has come a long way from where it was, and the price is starting to come down some. Yes. Um, at least in the cons- consumer market, if you want to go out and build your own system that way, it's coming, the price is starting to drop, but... I think that's why we're seeing it more in those trucks and people that are living in their trucks. Yes. That where that truck is is their home and their business. They want those types of things. They want those creature comforts. They want that technology um, in their home. Absolutely, I, I completely agree with you. <laughs> there was one truck. It was ridiculous. It had a freaking whirlpool tub in it. That was ridiculous. I mean, so. On most of our trucks, if if you're driving one of them or, or if you've seen a picture of them, you know that the bed folds down over a dinette set and you can lift the bed up and it's Murphy bed style and there's a dinette set there. Well, this one didn't have a dinette set. It had a jacuzzi tub. And I'm going to say it was a two-person. It was a two-person. That's how it was advertised. Yeah. It was a two-person tub. I When I saw the pictures of it online, I thought, oh, that's a one-person little sure. rinky-dink tub. When no. I got in there, I was like, well, that's a big it's tub. It's a big tub. And um, the, the wall, the side of the tub that faced into the sleeper, it was actually had a glass in it, so I don't know why you would want to, but you could see in uh, through there. I guess we had fish in there or something. I, don't I know. guess if you were laying on the floor because it was pretty low. It was pretty it wasn't low. Like it was, you <laughs> it know, was, eye level. No, and it was funny because I think a couple people had already been in and out when I showed it to them, and they were like, "Oh, we didn't even see that." Yeah, it is. It was not easy to see, but it was a cool. Um, it was very cool, and they had a fireplace in there. They had a TV. It was definitely set up for uh, not a lot of over the road traveling. It was definitely more of, of of like drive it someplace and pull a trailer and stop and be camped out for right. a week. Yeah. So definitely. like trade show circuit or something like that. Not not a everyday over the road truck, but it was really cool. Gorgeous every truck. every button, every uh, doorknob, doorknob had a little buffalo on it. In gray, it was. Did did we say really that the whole truck. theme was buffalo bills? I don't think we did. No. So the whole theme, the outside paint job was the the buffalo, the the like their helmet emblem, the running the buffalo team. with the the streaks, but the football team. Yeah. Um, they had a signed uh, jersey from a Buffalo Bills player. I don't follow football, so I couldn't I tell either. you who he was or if he's current. But it was a, an autographed jersey from a Buffalo Bills player that some folks were geeking out over. Um, yeah. It, it, it was it was a gorgeous truck. I, I could have done without the the Buffalo Bills branding, but that was his, yeah. that was their um, desire, yes, their fandom, and yeah, it worked for them. I would have went with I don't know the USC Trojans or something. Yeah, or the or, or Alabama Roll Tide or uh, Crimson Tide or or the Alabama Crimson Tide or uh, LSU. You know, go Tigers, something. I don't know. Go Tigers. I, a purple and yellow sleeper might be a bit much. It might. Well, yeah, it might be. But hey. Do it right. Mm-hmm. I'm more of a, like a white truck with some neutral 
colors on the inside. Yeah, don't want to bring attention to yourself. No, I, I did like the I fireplace, it. though. I do dig that a lot. We um, Back when I, we drove, we always joked about building a custom truck for us, which we never did, but we always said we're going to get a fireplace that's on a drawer, so you just pull it out and have a fireplace <laughs> and stick it back in there when you're done. N- never materialized, but um, it was a very cool truck. It was also to see the level of craftsmanship those uh, people have over at ARI. Yeah, it was they, nice. Um, they do really nice builds. So I completely understand why that would have been your favorite. It was it was a lot of fun. Um, so as I alluded to earlier, we are going to have tack on a uh, about a forty minute tour of walking from literally the booth we were hanging out at all the way across the expo to the ARI booth, which was on the complete opposite side. Totally opposite side, yeah. And uh, so you'll get a, a little snippet of what was at the show, and you'll hear some of our running commentary. Again, we're just a couple idiots talking on a microphone, having fun. And, um, yeah, I, I'm very curious as to what your uh, thoughts are on everything. Yeah. You know, uh, before we go to that, though, it is an Outer Belt episode, and what would an Outer Belt episode be without talking about our plane? Well, can we make our, make our announcements before you talk about your plane so we don't forget? <clears throat> sure. It, you don't have to. You you run the show, so you do what you want to do. And Jerry runs the show. We've talked about that. Jerry, what do you want to do? Um, Plane or announcements? Let's go ahead and uh, do the announcements just so we don't forget. Ha, huh, I win. Yeah, so um, coming up on the 15th of April, uh, we are going to do a live show. Oh, that's right. We are switching our time to 6 p.m. Eastern time, 3 p.m. Pacific time. Um, so be... Join us, please. We're, we're going to have our moderators again. Were you going to say be there? Reading, I was going to say be there. <laughs> we're going to have our moderators again to uh, moderate comments and feed them to us so we don't have to sit and watch the comment stream the whole way. Love to answer your questions and talk to you folks um, through that chat. Uh, and then also coming up in July will would that, be our next trade show. That would be July the 21st and 22nd. Yes, Fort Wayne, Indiana. At the... Allen County War Memorial Coliseum. That is correct. And we are going to be there in the Highfield booth. We're going to have a uh, booth kind of kind of in the middle of the room. Kind of, yeah. Um, and can't miss it. Really can't miss it. Well, if you blinked. That's true. Yeah. For a long time. For a long time. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. All of us are going to be there. You'll get to meet mentors. You'll get to meet staff. You'll um, you get to see a lot of other vendors going to be there truck salesmen, uh, other carriers. And there'll be other high field contractors there too you can talk to. So if, if you feel like you're getting the, the runaround from, not the runaround, a, a bill of goods from staff, yes, you know, talk to the other contractors that are there. They'll tell you, they'll give you the straight scoop. Absolutely. Vet us. I have no problem <clears throat> with that. Talk to other people. We'll see what they have to say. Um, you know, it, it we're, you know, it never fails. We're not everybody's cup of tea. Like no, we do not. really good, but every now and then we get someone who will, um, talk to someone and they're like, yeah, we ran with them, but really wasn't a yep. good fit for us. And um, I always say, you know, hear them out, listen to what they say, and then also listen to come to a show like this and hear from 30 other people and sure. get their opinion as well. Yeah. It's um, it's a great chance to kind of vet, hey, uh, Highfield's saying this, it sounds too good to be true. What's your experience? You know, or they're saying that, or do you think they'd be open to changing this or that? Those are great shows, great Certainly. times to have those conversations um, and then also meet us, get get a feel for who we are. Come hang out with us at the uh, Casino Royal. That's not right. At the Casino, uh, Casino Night. Night. Um, we're going to give everybody $1,000, tell them cut them loose. And, in, in fake money. In fake money, yes. And uh, we're going to um, have a great time. Last year they had craps tables, roulette. Yes. They had uh, blackjack. I was only at the craps table. I don't know what else happened in that room. Uh, but more importantly, they're going to be giving away... Uh, uh, giveaways all night long. All Everybody night. gets a wristband when they get in there, and they watch them change it this year. Probably. And they, um, you know, when we first started, it was different. Anyways, they give you a, a wristband, <laughs> and they do door prizes all night long. And these door prizes are nice. I mean, they, they are very they, nice. Like anywhere from say twenty five to fifty dollars at a pilot, all the way up to you know a couple hundred dollars steakhouse dinners right. to uh, toolboxes on trucks yep. to. Um, let me think of the things. Just Eric and I going to these shows over the years. We won a fifty-inch television one year. Eric did. We won a, um, you know, those 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 little um, what do they call that? 
They like fit into the back of your trailer hitch and just give you like two foot of outdoor space. It's like a tray. Like a, like, a, a carrying tray? Yeah, like a they're, like, they're like four or five foot wide, a <laughs> couple right. foot deep, and then you can just hook them into your and trailer they're, hitch they're on your flat. car. They're yeah. flat, yes. And you, you just load them for, for security. Like put your of, cooler or whatever. Yeah, when as you're, you're traveling down the yes. road. Yes. Yeah, so sure. I won one of those one year. Nice. I mean, um, they have, obviously they give a Traeger away every year. They Almost every year they give away iPads. It's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Um, so the first year I did it, uh, they... As you're playing, if as you win, you would get tickets, and then they they drew the prizes off the tickets. I think they quit doing that because all the freaking poker sharks and blackjack <laughs> people who were really really great kept sweeping the pages the tickets, and winning everything. Yeah. Uh, so now they do it based on the on just the uh, wristband that everybody band. gets. But it's uh it's a lot of fun. I encourage people to come to the show, come hang out with us, meet us. It, weather permitting, we'll do an outdoor party, um, after party circle up the wagon so to speak and Sounds just kind of hang out and it's a great time to get to know us on a on a uh, on a personal level get to know our character um so parking for that i do want to disclaim is 16 dollars a day um typically if you get there on the first day and you stay overnight because they do allow you to stay over the night in their parking lot then they don't really charge you for the second day but don't tell anyone i said that yeah um but uh yeah, it's a great event, and we encourage you to be there. So we got two things coming up: the live next week, six p.m. on the East Coast on the fifteenth of April. On the fifteenth of April, I said next week, didn't I? You did say next week. I meant sorry about that. What are dates? Anyways, um, and then they can be fun. True, true. And then uh, Expo Expo in July. So the airplane of the day. The airplane of the day. Last week, I brought y'all a plane. It was, was it the pink plane? Did I do the pink plane last week? Yes. Yes. So that was the loudest plane I said I'd been in, right? Like unreasonably loud? Yes. Well, today I'm bringing you a CRJ200 by Delta. Jerry, I know for a fact you are well acquainted with this plane. And do you know why I brought it today? If yesterday, If last week was the loudest, this plane will be the quietest. Most uncomfortable plane I've ever been in in my life. Okay, so this airplane, the seats, it's like one bench seat for two people. Not two separate seats, just one bench, one bench. seat for two people, and the backs kind of move. So the backs are, are separate. But but the actual seat part of it, the, the, the bottom seat, is just one bench cushion. Wow. There's no contouring, nothing. Wow. And then the backs, like I said, each person gets their own backs. Did I, you get separate armrest in the middle? You not separate armrest, but there is an armrest in the middle. Okay, yeah, right. it's about an inch and a half wide. Um, I sat on the window seat for this, and because the plane is so small, you know how like when you're in a window seat, you can kind of lean to your right and kind of get into that curve. Sure, there's no curve. The plane's so small, it's just like, oh man, it was. And I flew from Atlanta to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Speaking of, and it was. Just the absolute most uncomfortable flight I've ever been on in my life. And um, I, I flown it one other time, and I hate it. Uh, Delta has committed to getting these out of their fleet because they're so <laughs> hated. Um, there, you've already seen a couple other carriers have gotten them out of their fleets. And it's terrible. I know, Jerry, you spent some time in it. What did you think? Because, you know, you're like me. You're not necessarily the smallest person in the world. Definitely. I, I was even bigger back whenever I was on it, I rode from um, uh, Knoxville, Tennessee down to Atlanta to catch a connecting flight. And Is that 12 minutes? <laughs> uh, it was more like 20, but it, it was a horrible plane. Like, there is absolutely zero storage in that thing. Oh, none. You can't none. even get a carry-on up there. Wow. No. Everything's if you gate checked. Huh? If, yeah, from, de- from the very first person, it's gate-checked immediately. There is no conversation of carrying anything, no book sacks. Like, my books, I carry a big book sack. It ain't going on. And by book sack, he means backpack. Backpack, excuse me. Sorry. Yeah, what, what do you call it, Jerry? Book sack or backpack? I would say backpack. Okay. Well, Back to the airplane story, please. Me. <laughs> You're saying? <laughs> yeah, I was just going to, I completely agree with you. It was um, a horrible, horrible experience. Um, I'm happy to hear. I was on another one, actually, um, from Knoxville up to Detroit. Yeah. Uh, when we were going to uh, Upper Michigan to visit Don's family once, but um, yeah, I'm, I'll be very happy whenever Delta does finally get rid of them. Well, you know, I'm sorry. 
I was going to say the the newer is it the CRJ nine hundred? Yes, the nine hundred. They are way night nice. and day. Yeah, night, night and day. day. Night and day. Yeah, and it's the same. It's the same design. They just made the the uh, engines more powerful, and they made the actual airplane itself, like the fuselage part of it, a little bigger. Okay. And they made and not much. I mean, like a foot bigger. Right. And they made the wings a little wider, and it's like it's so small that literally just giving a foot more in the cab. It's like a. It's totally different. <laughs> yeah. Um. So they were going to. They actually announced mid-pandemic that they were going to be done, and and you won't. You know, next year you won't be flying a CRJ two hundred. But airfare came back with such a strong demand that they were like, "Oh darn, we yeah. actually can't. We can't phase them out yet." And then all the supply chain issues with Boeing's had and Airbus have had. They're having to hold on to them a little bit longer, but they will soon be gone. And it's like. If I see one of those, if I'm booking a flight and I see one of those, I find something else. I'm, I'm like, I'm not squeezing myself, up. It, pretzeling yourself. Yeah, it's horrible. And the bathroom is a joke. I didn't even try. You basically <laughs> have to stand outside the bathroom <laughs> to be able to use it. <laughs> it makes <laughs> it's it's bad. Um, well, that's my story. And I'm sticking to it. And as usual, another very interesting airplane story. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, we'll have show notes of this uh, up on the uh, <clears throat> up on the podcast, uh, our Facebook as well. Um, is there anything else we'd like to add on, real quick? Don't forget to check out our website if you're interested in joining Highfield Trucking. It is www.highfieldtrucking.com. We do have a live chat feature on there that seems to be very popular right now. Uh, so get on there. You can chat with us Monday through Friday, 8 to 5. Mainly me when I say us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's your chance to actually reach out to Jerry himself. Yeah. Um, See, Jerry actually does talk. Yes. If you or chat. A chat, he doesn't talk. Yeah, he doesn't talk. He just chats yeah. with you. I, uh, <clears throat> uh, what was I going to say? If you... Are about, interested. If you are interested in doing what we do and, and talking on a podcast, no, wait, what? what <laughs> I was going to ask you that question. <laughs> By doing what we do, do you mean the podcast or driving as if a contractor for Panther or FedEx if Customer you're, Critical? That's the one. If you're interested in driving for FedEx or Panther, uh, I almost said Panther Custom Critical. I'm just butchering it. <laughs> uh, please reach out to us again. Uh, like Jerry said, the website's uh, www.highfieldtrucking.com. That is H Y F as in Frank I E L D trucking T R U C K I N G dot com. Uh, we get a lot of people going like I couldn't find it. H A Y F I E L D. It's mm-hmm. like no, no way. It's just Highfield, um, and it's not H I G H F E L D. If you would like to reach out to us directly or about the podcast, you have anything you want to us to talk about? We have a couple of uh, people have already started emailing us at the Outer Belt Podcast at uh, gmail dot com. And uh, we'd love to get your feedback from there. If you haven't already, please like this video and subscribe to our channel. Hit the little bell, let you know when we're going to be po- uh, putting new content out. And um, we would just love it if you'd leave a comment, say something about us, even if it's rude. And um, we would be happy to uh, engage with y'all on there. We do reply back to our comments, and we do read them, and we love all the feedback we are getting from y'all. Thank y'all so much for supporting us the past uh, couple months. Yeah. And uh, and if you're listening to us on a podcast, go to your podcast app and leave us a review there if you yeah. wouldn't mind. That'd be great. Very helpful to help other people find us. Absolutely. Yes. Don't keep us to yourself. Share us. We yeah. gotta, there's a lot of us to go around. Hey, everybody. I'm Patrick. Yeah, I'm Chili. And we're over here at the Mid-America Truck Show. Jerry Bear's on camera. He doesn't have a microphone, unfortunately, so he can't comment, but... We'll get his feelings later. Uh, we're just going to go walk around and see show what's you, going on. Show you what it's all about. Yeah. All right, let's go. There we go. This is the hard part. How do you figure out where you want to go? I don't know. You know, up and down, I'm side to side. I'm walking the whole thing. I, I, I don't know. It's the hard part about expos. Big Walmart International. This Walmart truck has a 14.9 liter engine. Oh, it's probably ISX 15. Yeah, Cummins. Remember when Walmart used to have cab overs? Actually, 
I'm pretty sure that is an old Walmart cab over. Really? Yeah, with the blue striping on yeah. it. Yeah. So it's kind of funny. You can see there where they were, where they were, where they used to be, and then here they've moved up to these uh, internationals. Walmart actually drive runs everything. Whatever they get their hands on, they run. They're not they strictly do. internationals. I've seen a lot of Peterbilt Skinworth yeah. play around. Yeah. Yep. This guy has 1.5 million miles. Safe miles. Safe. That's a lot of running. It's 15 years. Wow. Uber Freight's in the house. They brought this whole setup. I mean, look at this. This is nice. It is nice. This booth. They have a big lounge area over there, too. They side. get a lounge area? Yeah. Wow. You know, one thing that surprised me is how many podcasts there are. There are a lot of them. You look over here, you see tons of yeah. podcasting from all over the industry. It's become such a common thing. And here I thought we were being cutting edge. I love this truck. This is I beautiful. love this truck. I it love is. this truck. It's a gorgeous truck. This lowrider. Yeah. Look at these rims. Just the rims, even even the uh, the leaf springs down there. Oh yeah, the leaf springs are gold Everything too. Everything up front. I don't know if that's going to show up on the camera or not, but I'd probably not. Too too dark, probably. <laughs> this thing is beautiful. Yeah. You could also that's see. Gorgeous. Look how low this baby sits. Yeah. Look at the fairing. You got a quarter inch baby, eighth inch there. I mean, it's incredible. <laughs> In this beautiful chassis, just gold love speckled. That gold flake. Love that gold flake. Aluminum fifth wheel. Aluminum fifth wheel, so shiny. Yep. This thing looks like it's never actually towed anything ever. It does look like that. Off the showroom floor, straight to the show circuit. Yeah. Beautiful car, beautiful truck. But these shows are unique because they're not just about showing you uh, cool accessories. You can also get turbochargers and exhaust manifolds. Well, and you can get plenty of turbochargers all over the place. Oh, by the way, I say I made a deal for turbochargers for all our trucks. Nice. They're guaranteed to give us uh, a decrease of fuel economy of five percent. Nice. Not, but they put more power, right? More power, they decrease the fuel economy. They go faster. So we'll get we'll get a sixty-five faster. Yes. Yeah. Still limited at 65. Only 65, but we'll get there faster. Much faster. So these people are pretty cool. Check them out, Truck Parking Club. They are pretty cool. Uh, dot They're com. like a, a, a Airbnb for truck parking. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Y'all talked to them a good bit the other day, right? Yeah, Moose and I talked to them for a little bit the other day about what they do. Yeah. Um, I was really interested in, in them for um, I feel it at sea. Yes. Finding somewhere in Florida to be able to park the trucks. But they don't have anything close, right? Right now they don't, no. Right now they're only in Naples, Florida. But they're an um, upstart company, they, yeah. and they're already got a huge network, and that's yeah. just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, check them out. Yeah, check them out. This wing is mostly accessories and recruiters for drivers and for owner operators um, you could buy a bunch of knickknack stuff there for trucking um, but now we're moving to the um, north wing the north north wing south wing something like that we're actually going around uh, the arena right now they're gonna have a tractor pull here tonight <laughs> you can be your drink out of your mind like hey, this hey, one. <laughs> what a good production assistant. So welcome to the North Wing. This is in fact the North Wing. It is the North Wing. And yeah, this, this is. is more for uh, the trade show part of it for businesses. So a lot of trucking companies come here and they see the new trailers. They talk to the fuel providers, shops, things like that. Uh, owner operators as well. It's just a place for manufacturers to show off their new trailers. Sure. And a place for... Um, Fleets to come and Fleets spec to, them out and, yep, and see what they're looking at, what the, what the new stuff is, new technology. Absolutely. So it, less accessories and more uh, 
more actual, business. more business side. More business, so let's yeah. go check out what they got. It's so cool, this section, because you see these trailers going down the road all yeah. the time, and they look like hell. They've just been they big do. crap. And you actually get to see one brand new. And you don't really get a chance to look at them and see what they're doing, right? No. I mean, this one's kind of cool. It's, it's a, a RGN, a Google Ghost Neck, or a Low Boy, sometimes they call them. Yes. Uh, it actually has extenders on the side, so you can extend them to carry wider loads. Yeah. Um, so for those of you that don't know, what happens here with the RGN is the tractor will drop his, his airbags, disconnect here, pull this part away, and you can roll things like tractors or combines up onto the deck, reconnect to the track, the, the, um, the, the gooseneck here, raise it back up and you're down the road. So, interesting technology. Yeah, but a, but a, a great way to handle extremely heavy sure uh and tall and large oversized yeah. cargo uh, i also also melissa if i ever went back to flat bedding yes i wouldn't do it unless i was in a roll top yes these roll tops are slick yeah and you're still securing your freight, but you're not throwing tarps. Yes. You're, you're, you're grabbing a pole and you're walking to the you end of the trailer. Pole, that's it. Yeah. Secure it and you're on your way. These trailers are so friggin' expensive too. People don't realize, like, you think, you think, oh, the tractor's the business end of the truck and it's gonna be mostly, some no, of these trailers, trailers are yeah. way more expensive than the tractors. Those little motors and that thing, little Caterpillar diesel in there, and yeah. they used to make them uh, APUs out of them. Really? Yeah. They were good. They just required more frequent oil change, and that's why they kind of fell out of, out of oh, favor okay. to Kubota. Yeah. Wilson and I saw this set up here Whoa. earlier in the week. Oh, that's cool. The paint job on, on both these trucks this is pretty cool. Holy cow. Like post apocalyptic looking. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, can we get a turbo around here? Um, I think there's a couple of turbo shops. I haven't seen one in a while though. This thing looks sick. Jerry, are you yeah. getting all this? You got this truck? Yeah. This thing's. Look at the pipes. That's. It's got a, it's got a arc welder. It's got the arc welder on it, yeah. I guess they're not hauling explosives. El Diablo, Loco. Welder rough welder. Brass knuckles hood ornament, I uh -huh. say yes. <laughs> not a lot of visibility out of that windshield. Not much, not much at all. The interior walls and ceiling are all like alligator skin, it looks like. Nice. It's pretty cool. I like that turbo That's right strong. there. Yeah. That turbo, it's proud to be an American. It is proud to be an American. I wonder how long that paint will last on that turbo. <laughs> <laughs> One rev? One rev, yeah. <laughs> One rev to 15,000, it's all over. Yeah. So if you don't know turbos, uh, add more air to the engine so that they can add more fuel and get more horsepower out of an engine. And they do that by having the exhaust right out of the engine go through them and spool up a fan which pushes the air in. Right. So a turbo gets extremely, extremely hot. hot. I don't know 
much about Green APU. They have a, um, I think, if I remember correctly, they operate all like a tri-pack does, and it's mostly a 12-volt base system. Okay. So we don't use that, that in our trucks. Um, so I've never had a really reason to explore them too sure. much. But I see them everywhere. I don't know if they're just doing really good with uh, marketing or... So Four State Truck, uh, these guys, fourstatetrucks.com, we use them a lot. Do we? Yes, what I order I order a lot of parts for the trucks at it with them. Okay. Uh, now here they're showing their bling. Typically it's like we're buying um, mud flap holders or we're buying <laughs> grills. They keep a lot of like the, the grills in stock so okay. if you hit a deer, they're a good place to go because you know, Freightliner will cost you a couple thousand dollars. If they have them available. If they have them backwater. available on non back order yeah. and four state trucks may have them for 250 bucks. So it's not, not a hard piece, decision. That piece, that oh, grill. Oh, right here, there you go. Yeah, that grill <laughs> isn't even a, uh, it's not a structural component, it's strictly beauty. It is cosmetics. Cosmetics, thank you. Yep. And there it is. There's that grill. Yep. They just have all kinds, I mean, they're just a huge auto, a huge truck parts company. And look at me, a stainless steel, polished stainless steel bumper starting at a thousand bucks. Like that's outstanding. That, that's so much more expensive if you go to a, a, a dealership and buy them. So good company, we use them a lot. Uh, they are the Chrome Shop Mafia people too. They're the Chrome Shop Mafia you said? They are, yes. They're the Lynch Lowrider. I love the color scheme on this truck here. This one? Yeah. It's very it's different. It's right? very classic. It makes it you is. think of like like an older school 1970s paint job. Yeah, it's not something I would come up with, but I like the way it matches and comes together. Yeah. I like those stacks too. I do like the There's something pipes. really cool about just massive six, eight inch stacks. I do wonder though, where does the water go that collects in that pipe when it's raining? Does it just blow out when they turn it on? It must. It must just rain nice exhaust water. Oh yeah, all over your pretty clean truck. <laughs> Again, here's a company who specializes in lifts. So they're yeah. not advertising the truck. No, they're, they're actually, drivers. They're advertising the shops. They're, they're showing off. Yeah, the shops. Yeah. This is a lift. Um, so you don't buy one lift. You buy all four, all four. and you can lift the whole right. truck up. And they they move around just like uh, pallet jacks would. So they're actually really easy to move. They're battery powered, or not battery, electric powered, and. We've got an interesting booth here. Lots of conversations going on even today, yeah. Saturday. Well, Mercer, you know, they're huge in flatbed, right? Yeah. And they've been around a long time. I don't think they run a lot of California because every Mercer truck I've seen is an older, I'm oh, sorry? I, I was just gonna say it's too long and too heavy. Oh no, they're just old, they don't have DPF. Trucks. They don't, you know, they don't have DPF filters on and things like that, which makes them great. They're super reliable, but they're, not the best for the environment. I understand sure. why they don't run them anymore. But like this thing's a workhorse. Look at this thing. Yeah. It's this is. It's a 1977. That's when the company started. That's not. The, is that not the truck here? No. Okay. It's a good looking truck. Look at all the fuel tanks. Yeah. It's got four fuel tanks. Yeah. Yeah, they've had the same booth for years. Um, last year, they had the truck up a little higher and in the very center, and it was surrounded by the bar. Okay. So I kind of broke the booth up. Right. It looked really nice. There have been a lot of lift companies. There's a few more over here still to get to. Yeah, it's, um, I guess that's becoming, uh, like that technology's maturing, and so sure. there's more companies doing it. I remember when they first came out and there was one place with a lifted truck up in the air and it was like, whoa. But now it's fairly Not common. Not so special anymore.
straps. Okay, now this is one of my favorite parts of these truck shows. Oh, the classic trucks. You got right up here, you got real working classic oh, yeah. trucks. These aren't, I mean, like they got the chrome polish, but that's about it. These are not uh, show trucks, uh, trailer queens no, or whatever. This thing is, trucks. it's a portion plate, which means it actually is a working truck. Boy, I mean, you are just like, you are right there. Yes. Yes, you are. You see everything right in front of you. Everything. So, my first uh, time going into an 18-wheeler, uh, my dad's uh, buddy came to town, and he was in a, not a, not a Peterbilt, but a Freightliner uh -huh. cab over. And his, the, my, the, the friends, he sat in the driver's seat, his wife sat in the, laid in the, in the sleeper. Right. And my dad sat in the passenger seat, and I sat up on the hump. <laughs> and that was, uh, that was where we chatted. It did not a lot of room. It was a tight, tight fit. But you know, these things are cool. You could get these uh, cab overs like queen size beds and stuff in the back. Now you couldn't stand up in them. No. So you had to, you know, put your clothes on laying down. Yeah, but sure. Um, massive, massive bed. My uh, neighbor down the street when I was growing up had a white cab over. I can't tell you the brands. I don't recall because I'm old. Um, but that was my first introduction to big trucks, like up close and personal, yep. was his. It was well, pretty cool. And if you don't know, this whole cab tilts cool. forward, yeah. and that's how they get to the engine. So there's no, 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 hood, no whatever. Here. Yeah. This, like these little doors are for like checking oil and stuff like that, so you don't have to tilt it every time right. you go to your pre trip. But when you get an old change, you got to secure everything. Everything in the bunk. Otherwise, <laughs> you'll have something slide and bust through the windshield. Okay, now these are cool. So this is early Peterbilt's attempt at aerodynamics. Look at how slippery they made this truck. Yeah. Wow. They slightly, very slightly <laughs> raked the headlights back and gave a little bit of a swoop. Right. And that's an aerodynamic truck. It, more than that. Yes, I mean, you compare it to that right, Marmon right next Marmon, to it. Yeah, yeah. So Marmon, Marmon is actually known for like being a boutique truck builder. Okay. Super, super high I'll end. Um, super high end and uh, very well built trucks. I mean, you can tell this one's got quite a few years on it. This is the 86. And, uh, yep. This would have been like driving a Cadillac back in the 70s. Wow, they got cones of silence over here. Oh, they do. Top secret meetings. Oh, you know, we haven't done any of these, but the show also has these, um, the stage where they do like talks about industry uh, items. Um, and um, you, can, you can do seminars and stuff and actually learn about uh, various topics. They also have some breakout rooms, but the, this one they put in the middle of the floor. Um, it's really good, especially if you're trying to do your research and learn about trucking and want to get involved. Um, and they talk about everything. They can talk about running a shop, they can talk about financing a truck, they also talk about uh, good uh, maintenance policy, you know, for, uh, uh, practices and things like that. It's it's a very educational show. Sure. It's not just for looking at the pretty chrome. It's a good place to graduate from being a driver to an owner operator or even beyond that. Correct, yes, I agree. I agree. Um, I'm excited to see Pat Carr, Kenworth is back at the show this year. Um, they have not been, um, or they've been in a very small way over the last couple of years. A lot of the big truck manufacturers have gotten out of coming to the shows, and it's very cool to see them coming back. I think it has to do with their 100, uh, 100 year anniversary this year, so okay. Kenworth turns 100 years old this year. And I, actually this uh, this W900, I think is one of their 100 year old, uh, 100 year anniversary. <laughs> it's, not, it's brand new, it's not 100 years old. It's good for 100 year old Now truck. this one, on the other hand, yeah. is 100 years old. I mean, this right here is, <laughs> that's back when trucking was trucking. Yes, it was. As they say. Yes, it was. Back in my day. No doors. No door. you don't need no RC belts. You're a windscreen. Otherwise, you're exposed. Yes. 
Yep. No air conditioner, radio, CB. 1923. It's got a, a Buddha four-cylinder, naturally aspirated, 26 horsepower engine. So yep. Carbureted. It's got it's a got Magneto. A PNL three-speed transmission. Yep. The Magneto, wow. an eight-volt Magneto for its electrical. And that's it. So the lights. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's a beautiful truck. It is Kenworth, beautiful. it looks like they're saying uh, Kenworth actually, the employees at the Chillicothe plant actually restored this thing. Uh, so Kenworth built a lot of their trucks in Chillicothe, Ohio. And uh, they uh, they did a great job restoring this thing. Gorgeous. This thing is absolutely beautiful. Gorgeous truck. It's it funny is. too, you can kind of tell how, uh, not only have the trucks changed, the size of the trucks changed, but also the size of the humans. Yeah, I don't know definitely. that I could fit in that thing to drive it. Could. That is a itty bitty little little thing to get in. And there's no adjusting the seat. Or the there's pedals. no adjusting the, the anything. Nothing. It, it is what it is. Yeah. This is one of those trucks. They probably had a, a when you got hired to drive it. They had a sign like a Disneyland or amusement park. Oh yes. And it, it said you must be this tall to drive this truck. Yes. And no taller. And no shorter. And no shorter. Because right there's here. no adjusting if, anything. If you're right here. We're hiring only five foot uh, six inch <laughs> exactly. drivers that weigh between 100 exactly. and 110 pounds. Um, even so, the rear view mirror is just this tiny, tiny, tiny little, little thing, thing yeah. hanging from the top. Uh, it's so cool. You you take this and you just walk right next to it and you see what a W900L, which they're I think wow. they're discontinuing these trucks. Number one of 900. Number one of 900. It's the 100 year look, you can see it on the, on the uh, exhaust um, safety. Stacks, yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for the, the stacks. Shields. Um, yeah, this thing is a beast. You know, we used to have a uh, Kenworth T660. Okay. And the cab is the exact same as it is for a W900. So when I look in there, it's like, oh yeah, this is exactly <laughs> like what we used to drive. Brings back memories. It does. This is a gorgeous truck, long wheelbase. Yeah. Um, that beautiful. steer axle is way out front, giving you a really nice, comfy ride because you're not sitting around on top of that wheel. So when it hits right. a bounce, you don't feel it where so you're at, you don't feel it. Yeah, exactly. So beautiful um, truck. Beautiful truck. It's 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 uh. Pretty fly. We had a special request from uh, Buttermilk. Yes, I think we're gonna go do that now. All right. Because I want to see it too. It's also a beautiful truck. It's also, yes, absolutely. It is gorgeous. Well, I think gorgeous is a stretch. What's that? <laughs> it's a dump truck. I said it's gorgeous, but I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, amazing. A, it's a gorgeous dump truck. It's a, How's it's that? Okay, it's a, pretty, it's a pretty dump truck. So this truck is a Western Star 47X. Yes. Which is the same model as our tractor. No, close. Where's a 49X as a tractor? Oh, is it a 49X? This is a 47X, Is this yeah. a 47? Did I, did I say it wrong? So this is a 47X, ours is a 49X. They look the same, but they this hood is same. a lot shorter. It is a lot shorter, you're right, you're yep. right. There's a big difference. That is the, yeah. main, uh, that is the main difference in these trucks. Um, look how high this cab is. This is also a vocational truck. This, what, what is this, like yeah. four and a half feet, five feet? It's four and a half feet. It's ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, the first step is... It, it's tall. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's very tall. Yeah. Um, so, but it's it's meant to go into a quarry and deal with obstacles and, and it, it you needs know... to have that clearance. You need to have, exactly, because yeah. you don't want a rock or something you drive over ripping an airline you out. Know. Buttermilk, or Melissa Cheshire, requested yes. us to look at this truck and show this truck because she learned to drive on a dump truck. Now, it didn't have the lift axle. It's just a three axle dump truck, but mm -hmm. she wanted us to come over and pay homage to all the drivers out there who learned to drive on a dump truck. Absolutely. You know, I didn't learn to drive on a dump truck, but I tested for my CDL on a dump truck. Nice. Yep. Nice. That was a beautiful truck. It was a six speed manual, single clutch, not a double clutch, six speed manual. And uh, fourth gear didn't work. <laughs> so it made for a very exciting uh, test. I bet. And, and guess what else we see? Another lift. Another lift. Another set of lifts. Yeah. This is cool. I like the pink color too. That thing stands out. It does stand out. And even got the it pink really LEDs on it too. Yeah. They set it up real nice. Yeah. 
Yes, they did. Look at this suspension. So this is not airbags. All the all the weight for these two sets of tires fall on this one pivot point right here, and that is uh, what carries the weight of all this. I mean, this is oh the bolts and everything. Yeah. But also, no air ride means when this thing is empty, it, it rides, rides rough. horribly. Yeah, it's going to ride even with air ride. When you have an empty truck that's meant to yes. designed to carry weight, they ride rough. Yeah. So. You see those drivers bobtailing down the road. They're not having a smooth, comfy ride. That's no, sure. no, they're bouncing. They are bouncing. I think that's what I like about with our trucks and expedited. Yeah. The trucks are already empty at, a, at such with the custom sleepers and the boxes and lift gates. They're already so heavy. They actually ride really smooth, even being empty. They do. And, it'll, and a lot for several of our trucks, you cannot tell a difference between no, having a load and not having a load. No. I think the only time you should tell a difference is if you're pulling a hill and you have a heavy load. Yes. Heavy in our truck is 12,000 pounds. Yes. But otherwise, you don't feel it. Absolutely. Well, here's a Mac. So Mac was always um, more of a heavy duty. That was their mentality. Okay. And so you see it right away. This truck is taller. It's higher. These yeah. tires are knobby. Yeah. Um, I like that it's got the acetylene uh, <laughs> the, headlamps. The, the lantern headlamp. Yes. Yeah. So this is just gas uh, driven. Um, I yeah. like the, the seat's a little wider too on this one. It is a little bit wider. The but steering. Still, no adjustments. No adjustments. Uh, there's one gauge on the truck. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's RPMs or what. It probably isn't speed in miles per hour. They weren't even thinking about that back this then. This one has a horn on it too. The other one didn't have a horn. We tried to find the horn the other day and you couldn't find it. In the middle? No, no, outside. Oh, I see. Okay. I was going to say, because that middle ring's not no. a horn. Um, no, the horn is. Oh yeah, it's got an actual. It's got the actual horn right here. Oh yeah, and it's the kind you push down on it. Right. It makes a. Yep. It's a noise. mechanical horn. Yeah. Look at it. <laughs> Chain drive. Really? Wow. I am yes, thank you. The chain. That's a huge chain. Yep. Wow. Dual tires. These are solid rubber tires. Dual tires on um, steel rim. On a steel rim. No, it's two rims. Okay, steer rims. That's a cool truck. Another beautiful truck. Yep. So this is 1924. This is one year after, after that, that Kenworth one. truck we looked at. But it's a huge difference, like you said. It's, it's more of a rugged truck. It is yes. just the, the, the way the, uh, the frame sits up higher. Oh, yeah. It's certainly more rugged of a truck. They're just... Two different things. Kenworths yeah. were designed uh, out of Washington State. At the same time, these were being designed, um, I want to say in, I don't remember where they're from. Actually, I don't remember where Mac is from, but they're, they're not on the West Coast, they're an okay. East Coast company. Right. So two very different uh, ideologies. Oh, the right job for the right, the right tool for the right job. Yes, and they're building trucks not knowing what the other one's doing. Sure. You know, it's sure. not like they were on a, online and seeing what the competition was doing. I mean, there's a real good chance at some point, you know, these, these two trucks could have been built simultaneously right. for 10 years before they even know the other one exists. It's dual chain drive too. It's it's one of each wow. axle. This is a cool truck too. Yeah, I wonder if it has a differential because otherwise the steering on this thing's gotta be brutal. So a differential would control how much power goes to which wheel. Yeah. Um, if they are both going, if, you, if you're getting power to both wheels, the truck will actually want to drive in a straight line and not turn. It's hard to tell. Yeah. It does have some linkage that runs back here on both sides, but that's interesting. Well, you, well, you see right here's your brake, right? You see the line coming in? That's okay, your yeah, brake hub. Because you don't need brakes actually attached to the tire. That makes no, no sense. Just stop the engine. It's, it's direct drive with, from the chain. Yeah. So. That's a cool piece of Americana. And I bet you, oh, well, I know these tires are solid rubber. Solid rubber. There's no air in there. None. There's no air at all None. in there. But again, that back then, 
back then comfort wasn't even a consideration no, it wasn't. Thought, get the job done get the job done and and, and get on yeah. and if you don't want to do it leave this we'll is great somebody else we're talking about uh, de mm. if depression era yep. time frame and, and industry and let's find someone else to do it it's yep. everything's changed since then now this I'm excited. Right in front of us we have the Western Star 49X, which is what we have, right. and the Western Star 57X, which 7X. just came out. Um, 57X. You know what's growing on me? When I first saw this truck, I thought I didn't like the hood. It's a little aerodynamic. It's slopey. It's um, it's not as muscular. It's not as aggressive muscular. looking as a 5700X. I agree. 5700. I agree. Completely agree with you. It's but just, it still looks good. I think. It does, and I like the little like air nails on the uh, bumper. Yeah. Like, it really has, it's growing on me. I love the paint job. This gray looks really yeah, cool. It's really nice. And this one's got the blacked out Alcoa rims that I really like. Yeah, with the really, blacked out hubcaps. Yeah, with the blacked out, yep. Nice paint job. These, uh, I even like the, the uh, mirror support being that piece of curved. Um, it's a little more style. Aluminum, yeah. It's not just a piece of black plastic or whatever. So I know people are complaining because these trucks are basically a Cascadia, but on the Western Star side, they are doing some things. They're giving you a little heavier um, frame. They're giving you things like those mirrors right. um, that are more curved and look a little better. Um, the inside layout, the dash looks very different than the Cascadia dash does. Now the, the bones are there of a Cascadia, but how they have everything, um, as far as how they have it laid out, but the aesthetic part of it looks quite a bit different. I, uh, yeah. So this one also, you see that black uh, huff, uh, hood up there, or, or vent up there? Yes. So this has the, um, what is the name of it? So basically, the sleeper air conditioner is built into the truck from Western Star. It's from the factory. So when you're parked, you can actually run your bunk AC with the engine off. And then when your battery gets low, the engine of the truck will turn on, charge the batteries back up, turn itself back off, and the whole time you have uh, air conditioner, no. Oh, so you have the comfort without idling the truck. Absolutely. Oh, that's nice. Yes. That's a nice feature. Yeah, no, it's very, very well thought out. Nice big aluminum plate, and of course they got the stacks because yeah. it's a Western Star. It's a Western Star, why would you have stacks? I love the Mac booth. This is not Mac trucks, it's Mac, Mac trailers. trailers. These yeah. are aluminum. All aluminum trailers. These things are so stinking expensive and awesome. So they build these aluminum trailers so they can get the absolute max amount of. Right, because they're uh, lighter than running steel. Absolutely. So when you have something that's um, like you're having heavy haul, which is what these flatbeds are. Sure. If you've got a trailer that weighs 5,000 pounds less than a steel trailer, that's 5,000 pounds you could haul that carry. someone who's got a steel trailer yeah. can't. The grain trailers. Uh, the oil trailers, the tankers, all those go based on weight. So the lighter you can make the trailer, the more money you can make. So that's what Mac does really, really well. Um, they're probably the best, or one of the best aluminum trailer manufacturers. Um, very cool booth they always have. They always bring out just the nicest. And it's funny too, because they'll never look that pretty no, again. No, never. <laughs> it's never. like, it's one time. How, how they got here looking that pretty is amazing. They came here on another trailer. That's how they did it. <laughs> Tarped. Yes. Tarped, yes. Uh, and of course, like here's an aluminum dump body on, at this site. Right. And this aluminum dump body you can see um, is not polished. It is just, it's just standard just regular aluminum. And at, at that point you gotta ask, do you really need a polished aluminum or not? Right. It looks better, but it doesn't make you a penny more. Not a cent more. So, um, you know, sometimes... Unless that posse is taking off weight. Unless what? That posse is taking off weight. Yes. And it's not. It's not. It's not. Oh, look. Guess what we found? Oh, more lifts. More lifts. Well, they've got lifts on this side, lifts on that side. Yes. They have all kinds of lifts. What kind of lift do you lifts. want? I heard these were the original wireless ones. Okay. So they communicate with each other. They do. So when you lift one here, yeah, the, the other, other side does. You don't have to. Oh, this is great. Gray's a operation. huge lift company. They've been out for a long, long time. The other day they had this, this straight truck here. They had this straight truck here on the lift the other day. Well, it's on the lift now, but they also had the front end up in the air on this one over here. It was kind of cool to see. Yeah. Just the front end, not the whole truck. Absolutely. And you can see too, 
The cool thing about having these wireless lifts is like that one back here in the back, yeah. they got the trailer and the truck up, right. so you're not limited. You don't need six guys to run the lift. Exactly, and you're not limited to what size your fixed lift is, right. because if you have a fixed lift and then you have a truck that's got a longer frame right. or something, you can't get it. and you can't lift it, you're, you, you, yeah, so that's where these things really shine. Plus, with insurance costs and everything, kits, Sure. are becoming a lot more challenging, so lifts are a great option. Yeah, pits are always open with me. Even if there's no truck over it, it's always yes. open. It's always a fall hazard. Um, we were talking joking about this trailer yesterday. Oh. This cattle trailer. It'll never smell that good again. It'll never smell that good again. <laughs> <laughs> if you have not uh, experienced uh, driving behind a, a cattle trailer, you should at least once in your life Or even worse, having one parked next to you. Oh, man. And you're trying to sleep, and they're like, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. It's just the uh, aroma. I believe we call the that aroma. aroma. The aroma is not yeah. pleasant. And then they have more, um, more older trucks. These, I think, are more show queens, though. These are definitely. Yeah, they are. Definitely. These trucks are restored and polished. Fresher paint jobs. Uh, really sharp looking um, old trucks. Right over here in the very back, you got a T600. That was Kenworth. <laughs> big hoorah into aerodynamic trucking and um, it it literally changed everything that thing became successful and at that point everybody had to move to building aerodynamic nice. trucks nice. and it's what's funny is that cab and that truck right there is the exact same cab on <laughs> that, um, that, uh, that w900 w yes this thing was what year is this 96 Yes, it's a 96 T600. Caterpillar diesel, 15-speed fuller. And you notice, too, it's not, it, like, it's, it's older, so you still got the old square headlights because that's right. all that was available. Sure. It, that was the law, too, back then. Had to be sealed uh, headlights. Okay. But they had the aerodynamic bumper. They got the aerodynamic um, fenders. The cab's narrower, and then it, it, the, the, the sleeper, it's hard to see, especially with the pipes. But it actually Especially scoops out, out. Yeah. the um, mirrors. That big piece of shiny chrome behind the mirrors. Yeah. That looks. Um, what's the one looking for? Oh, this looks like a pretty uh, effect. That's actually aerodynamics. That, well, the whole reason that exists is aerodynamics. Before that, they were the California mirror style, which is just a flat piece of steel that was polished because it looked pretty. Sure. Um, but yeah, this right here, and then also the fairings. That was the other thing that was a game changer. This thing has fairings over the steps. So it keeps that airflow attached to the side of the sleeper onto the trailer, making it real slippery in the wind. Um, again, this truck Things changed the world. you don't think about. World. We, have, we have trucks today, brand new trucks that don't have bearings uh, over, the, over the steps in the fuel tanks. Yeah. Yeah. Makes and, a big difference. And people ask us, why don't we put bearings on our trucks? Because they do make the truck more fuel econ right. economical. We do partial uh, fairings on our M2112s, right. but we don't on our uh, Cascadia. Cascadias. And a large part of that is actually the overall length of the truck, when you are the, uh, the wheelbase rather. When you have a long wheelbase truck, clearing obstacles becomes a challenge. Sure, with those and, fairings. And that's where fairings don't work. Right. But if it wasn't for that, absolutely, we fairing everything. You just save so much fuel. Now the good thing is the engine technology, and the front part of the truck has gotten so aerodynamic and the engine technology has gotten so fuel efficient and clean burning that it's not so much a concern anymore. Um, but it, uh, it would be nice if we could. But you can even see like these ARIs with their longer wheelbase. This is the ARI booth, obviously. They don't have fairings either. Similar, similar reasons. It's just- We almost got some of that on this one, at least, with the toolboxes. A little bit. In our trucks, you do as well. Um, but they're still not anywhere near as low as what no, a no, normal no, tractor would be. And even with these long wheelbases with the toolboxes, you still got to be careful because you will cross a rotor tracker. Oh, sure. And you can, yeah, or, or, or even a uh, steep uh, loading dock, right. and you can scrape. And you'll see, too, like both Volvo and Cascadia's do keep a little bit of fairing as much as they can at the step, but then nothing past that. So basically past this point, over there is a few more trailers. There is an outside area that's full of trucks. Um, it is just super windy, so we can't record out there. You won't be able to hear anything. Um, but this is the show. This is Mid America Truck Show. It's very large. We took you on a single kind of twisting way through here. We could have done four times 
longer video of just going and seeing everything. This place is huge. You didn't make it out this year. Next year, make a point to come see this. Yeah. It's a really there's cool a show. Of, there's a lot of cool stuff here. Um, make, but make it, take the opportunity to listen to, like check out the schedule, go listen to some of those classes, go talk to vendors, like for, look at it ahead of time because it's such a large show. Look at the, the, um, the vendor booths ahead of time so you can go and make sure you get your... You can map out. You can map out where you you're doing, yes. And who you want to see and make sure you hit those as priorities. Yes. Like your first day. And, then, and one, then the next day, you can, or if you have more time that first day, you can wander around and see the other things that are out here. Absolutely. The, the vendors are certainly happy to talk to you and, yes. and share information with you, let you know what's going on too. So. Absolutely. And bring yeah. some cash yeah. or a credit card because yeah. they do have some cool accessories that you're going to see that you're going to want. Um, but this is going to conclude our, the portion of our tour. We're actually going to record another video right after this of one side of one of these trucks. But we hope you join us for that one. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. I got another don't. Don't leave money on the table. Oh. Well, I say you should stay safe, everybody. Make good decisions. And I say keep those wheels a turning.